Hi, welcome to another Art of Physics program. We're going to continue our series of interviews of people from the Scientist Protection Program. Uh, but I, first I have to deal with some viewer concerns from our email bag. So one viewer asks, why were there no field trips this year like there were last year? Um, well, I'll tell you, we have a problem, and that is uh, the Scientist Protection Program is too far away for us to all go. So we just send Minion Improbable. Minion Improbable goes, and that's about enough. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Minion, by the way, can you tell us how to get there? Maybe people would like to go. No. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, if any of you out there follow MI's directions and journey there to the Scientist Protection Program, um, would you please report back, preferably in English, unlike MI? Um, thank you. Next, somebody commented about the talking heads. They wondered why they didn't see their lips moving. The talking heads. Uh, there's a great tradition from vaudeville that is carried over to TV. It's called ventriloquism. Uh, here's an example for you. Oh, if I didn't know I could do. Oh, if I didn't know this could do. Oh, if I didn't know you could do. Oh, if I didn't Tina, 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 Tina. Oh, 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 oh. So can you see how ventriloquism can help scientists maintain their cover identity by not moving their lips? This makes ventriloquism training a vital part of the scientist protection program. Uh, really? Oh, uh, sorry, Am I afraid we'll get into trouble if we reveal too much about the program, so we'd better get on with the show. Our guest today is Antoine Lavoisier. Welcome to the Art of Physics program. Merci, merci. It's nice to escape from that dreary protection program routine. All oh, right. Uh, well, it's nice to have you, but uh, I have to tell you, please don't speak French because our viewers are predominantly Americans. Americans? Uh, yes. Your country was started during my lifetime. You're still around? Well, so far, so good. Um, you lived from 1743 to 1794 in France? Quite so. I was fortunate enough to be born into a wealthy family and went to the best schools. Uh, so I understand. Uh, and chemistry was your favorite subject? Uh, I was, but I had to get a law degree to keep my parents happy. Also, I had to get involved in some kind of business, which turned out to be tax collecting. You were a tax collector? Oh, not me personally. <laughs> I was an administrator with a company that collected taxes for the French government. It was quite lucrative, and I made many good contacts. Well, as I understand it, you made an especially good contact with one of your fellow executives. Oh, very true. Jacques Pauls was a colleague of, and good friend of mine, and he had a problem I was able to help with. His daughter received an unwanted marriage proposal from Count de Amerval, and he asks me if I would marry her instead. How chivalrous of you. <laughs> Isn't there a little more to this story? Oh, I suppose. Uh, she had no formal training in science, so we made sure her education was up to par. Oh, sure, but what about her age? I don't see that this is any of your business, but very well. She was 13 when we married. What of it? Are you going to continue these impertinent questions? Uh, pardon, uh, I didn't mean to offend you. Oh. Uh, please, may we continue? I, I promise I'll be good. I suppose. Besides, although she was young, she enjoyed chemistry, she was good at languages, and she could draw. She also happened to be extremely attractive. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, you are French after all. I didn't mean to apply anything bad about her. In fact, she helped you substantially. Oh, that is true. We worked in the lab together and made the most careful measurements to the information during that time. We separated combustion from heat, and our data disproved the old phlogiston theory. Our theory for heat 
was that it was a fluid, and we called it caloric. Well, you were extremely well respected, and Marie Anne was able to do quite a lot of scientific work, which is very unusual for a woman in those days. It took another 100 years before another Marie did anything significant in French science, and she was Polish, Maria Sklodowska Curie. Ah, quite true. Also, I named two of the elements, even though I didn't discover them, oxygen and hydrogen. I couldn't have done it without my Marie Anne. Well, very true. Some of you have actually been referred to, you specifically, as the founder of modern chemistry. I suppose it has to include Marie Anne also. Well, we could have done even more, except for the action of some fools. You're referring to the French Revolution? Yes. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. The revolutionaries so hated our tax system that they paid no attention to my efforts to reform it. No, 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 they wanted blood. And in 1794, it was the guillotine for me. Oh, that's horrible. What a waste. Mais oui, we had no children. Marie Anne's father was beheaded and she was thrown into jail. All of our equipment and funds were confiscated. Since she was only 36, perhaps she could do something big. She did something big, all right. Excuse me, who are you barging onto this program? Minion Improbable, would you... <laughs> Never mind, Squirt, I know my way around. I'm here to tell Antoine about some of his errors. Oh, oh. I'm Benjamin Thompson, I was born in America in 1753, to a farming family. I didn't get my, fa my money like you, Antoine. You had money and married a woman 15 years younger than you. I was broke. My first wife was 14 years older and she had the money. But, 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 but. And another thing, don't wait for the military types to come after you. While I was an officer in the New Hampshire militia, I spied for the British. Then I went to England and did some more military things that earned me the title of Count Rumford. Ugh, you seemed like little more than a common criminal. Oh, I was way more than that. I also did some scientific work. While I was running a cannon factory, I performed experiments that disproved your caloric theory. Heat is nothing more than motion of molecules, not some weird fluid. Well, you did live later and longer than I did. I would have done more if I had more time. You haven't even heard the best. You know your precious Marianne. What about her? Well, after you died, she eventually got out of jail and got your estate back. She managed to get your work published and then became socially active in the salon crowd, entertaining scientists and intellectuals. That's how I met her. You in the salon set? That would be rich. Don't you underestimate me. You can't get away with as much as I did without being able to charm people when the need arises. Marie Anne had turned down several worthy suitors before we met, and I regarded her as a challenge. We became friends, toured Europe together for several years before I convinced her to marry me. You? Married Ma, Marie, Oh, well, don't go all weird on me. We married when you had already been dead for more than 10 years. Besides, I've actually come here to pay you a compliment. A compliment? From a military spy who married my widow? Woo, that should be rich. Well, hear me out. Once we got married, I dropped the Mr. Nice Guy act and decided to retire and putter around the house. Your precious Marianne wanted to keep up the social world, and we quarreled nonstop. She even poured boiling water on my prize roses. The marriage began dissolving faster than the roses wilted. We divorced almost immediately. And that is a compliment? Not really. I came to tell you I'm mightily impressed by whatever magic you have used to stay married to that difficult creature for 23 years. Oh, catch a <laughs> <laughs> Improbable says something is coming in, excuse me.
Thanks, viewers, for watching an extremely weird episode of The Art of Physics. Until next time, I'm Art Wiggins. Mm -hmm.